Thank you, Linda, for the opportunity to show my garden. Hey, everybody. I'm Nev Naidu. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. We moved here last year in August, bought into a new development. And with me in this home is my wife, Vanessa, and our two teen boys, Cyan and Sachin, and our two doodles, Teddy and Leo. This is Teddy. You probably will get to meet Leo later. Just a couple things before I show you my garden. It, please remember that it's just eight months old. So as you take a look at the, um, the garden, know that it's very young. And also, I've just started gardening here in the US. I'm, I was born and raised in South Africa. So most of the plants, etc., were very unfamiliar to me. And I'm still getting to know the names of these plants and the shrubs and the trees. So bear with me. All right, let's get started. So before I zoom into each section of the garden and show you the garden in detail, I just want to do a quick sweep of it. And just kind of explain the whole plan and design of the garden. There was, I'm standing right now under our pergola on our patio. And just to show you some Linda influences, there's a wire vine or angel vine and a myrtle topiary on our patio table. And then as I, oops, as I walk past the fire pit, uh, the, patio, the patio is screened by some emerald greens and Oakland ollies, and, and I will talk about that in a bit. But then you can check out the plant beds, which are pretty new. And as we go down, um, you'll find I have Nellie Stevens hollies. There's a Yoshino cryptomeria. The whole objective of this garden started when we were on a blank canvas. So because we bought on a, in a new development, uh, the backyard was very overlooked as with most new builds and there was really no garden. We, were, we just had a lawn uh, and two large maple trees on either side of the back. So the idea was to design a garden that would serve as a screen. And as I take you through the garden, you'll see we planted a whole, well, a whole lot of um, evergreens along the fence at the back and sides and so on, stuff like uh, chindo viburnums, emerald greens, privets, needle point hollies, Nellie Stevens hollies, Oakland hollies, just to create a screening. And then after the screening plants, the plan was to put in a whole lot of other plants uh, and also to create this zen like garden. with gravel the thought process was also to create a garden where there's three sections so the first section is a section where I do all the planting and uh, excuse the noise of trucks because as I said we live in a new development and there's lots of construction going on even over the weekends so plant bed and then gravel and lawn so we have dogs and it's good to have some lawn so that they can run around again plant bed just show you plant beds So I have plant beds, gravel, 
and lawn. So as I walk along the gravel, and remember I'm going to zoom into each section in a bit, uh, just to show you the pergola we've built recently. So the thing I love about this is you can, you can sit in the pergola, whether you're having dinner or coffee or whatever with guests, or you can sit around the fire pit and you have a great view of the garden. Just to mention that all this was not here eight months ago. So I will start at the back of our garden. Um, I just want to check out this foxtail fern under this large maple tree. It's early in the morning, sun's just come out. So this maple tree was around when we when we bought this property. So at the back of the garden, we have a whole lot of screening plants. You can check out the Chindo viburnum. We've got an Emerald Arborvitae. But also I put this Sky Point Juniper in. It's actually a double ball topiary which I think makes such an interest, fo interesting focal point at the end of the garden. There's my azaleas. I have lots of spreading hue planted on the ground because the idea is to cover the ground. Check out this ornamental grass. Still doing well. And I wanted to show you how nicely the ornamental grass goes next to that metal bird bath I have. And obviously the azaleas. I like sticking in items of interest on uh, the plant beds just to act as a conversation point and this is a blue star juniper topiary which I planted up recently love the texture of it and there's my beer barrel Planted up with a winter creeper and pansies. More spreading you. This is another maple tree. And that's a needle point holly, which will also provide great screening as it grows. There's also some privets along the fence. I love having bird feeders around. Uh, I think it's great to attract bird life and wildlife as well. There's my elephant ear, which I think is such a majestic plant. More ornamental grasses. Where there's shade, I, I try to stick in lots of ostas. This is a river birch tree. The label said dwarf river birch, so but I'm I'm not uh, I'm not convinced. I I'll I'll see. It might turn into a large tree but it will work
just to give you another view of this beautiful maple tree in this section of the garden. So as I walk down the ground or down this path, I have more spreading you. There's a sky pencil holly. And check out this boxwood, which I'm shaping into a topiary ball. It adds such a nice, interesting feature in front of that barbary. There's more azaleas planted up in a planter. There's my lace leaf Japanese maple. I think it's a lace leaf or some other form of Japanese maple. Also planted in a container. Another inspiration from Linda. I painted up the sticky torch. There's my sunshine ligustrum on the gravel bed, which I shaped where I pruned the stems. I'll show you another one, which uh, was the first one I did after watching Linda on, on YouTube. Again, I like adding items of interest in the garden like these two doves set on this plant stand, which I also got from an antique store together with this bird bath. I love how the ornamental grass reflects in the water. Check out this little Henry Sweet Spire. Such gorgeous color in the fall. It's bright green in, in the summer, but look at it now. This is my sunshine ligustrum, which I pruned to expose the stem. I did this shortly after watching Linda do hers and uh, it turned out well. I think I'm a good student of Linda's. So that's a good view of the Emerald Greens and Oakland Hollies that we have. You can see how they sit next to the pergola. And this was just planted about two months ago, but are really thriving. And you can tell they're almost reaching the height of the pergola. I also have more sunshine ligustrum, lavender. Hollies. And. More chindo viburnums on this section. Also adding great screening. Check out these silosias. Really adding some beautiful fall color 
in this section of the garden. Here I planted uh, a few Nellie Stevens hollies, also to act as screening plants, but they, they're pretty small now and young. And as they grow, the idea is to prune the bottom of these hollies. Uh, so you create this tree-like form in the garden which adds such architectural interest. You can check out the Celosias again. I also have some Nandina. Which will turn into this gorgeous red color uh, in the winter. Looking forward to that. I, I love the color of Nandina in winter. That's Mr. Tortoise. It reminds me a lot of growing up in South Africa. And I think he makes such an interesting feature under this Nellie Stevens. So I also have the Sunshine Lagustrum in a huge planter. This is a big one, which I also pruned. And at the bottom, I planted some marigolds and hostas. Just to add such a great focal point in this corner of the garden. And I also have a compact Japanese holly, which is in a planter. I think this planter is so cool, it, uh, it looks like a concrete planter that's aged, but it's actually not concrete. And then as I come to this section of the garden, this is one of my favorite water features. I built that base stuck in a boxwood bonsai. which is doing pretty good. There's also a lemon cypress topiary on a plant stand next to it. Meditation frog. So now I come to what I call the prime therapy section of my garden. Uh, and just before I get to <laughs> some of the therapy stuff I have or the therapeutic stuff I have in the garden. I just want to talk about this uh, Yoshino cryptomeria, which was one of the first plants or fun first things we planted in this garden. And the objective was to provide screening. And as you can see, it screens our neighbor's patio pretty good already. And again, just to remind you, this garden is just about eight months old. So to have this Cryptomeria or Yoshino grow so nicely is really rewarding. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but I want to take you to this Mago Pine which I planted in a concrete container. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I love this because it reminds me of a bonsai tree and is doing so well in this little container on this gravel bed. Now, my favorite spot in this garden is of course this section. It's so soothing and good to walk around in the morning with a cup of coffee, kind of contemplating the day ahead and reflecting on the days gone by as we sit beside this water feature. So it's a very simple planter that I got from Lowe's, filled in some river pebble and gravel, obviously some water. And then I got a bird bath solar powered fountain from Amazon for about 25 bucks and stuck it in. 
and now it makes a bird bath for all the beautiful birds that visit our garden but also acts as a very good water feature providing such therapy next to that creeping jenny which goes so well with it there's obviously a bird feeder for feeder there for our visitors and to attract wildlife I have this fountain grass and then a juniper planted up in this pot next to my wax myrtle and from this side you can take another view of the Yoshino just incredible it's a real pioneer of the garden because obviously it was one of the first things we planted and is doing so well but one of the key projects I had when we designed this garden was sorting out the drainage issues when you buy in a new development, one of the things the developers don't do well with the respect is the drainage. So we had lots of water accumulation in the garden and that was compromising my plants and all the plantings that we did. So in order to solve for that, we basically decided the best thing to do before we plant any more in the garden was to put in a French drain and a catch basin so you can see here we have a catch basin and we have piping that goes right down to the road that was buried in the ground and now we have no water issues in this garden. One of my favorite spots in the garden is what I call my rose garden. And as you can, as you can see, uh, they still in bloom in late October. Roses are beautiful to have in the garden. When I was growing up as a kid in um, on the east coast of South Africa, my dad planted lots of roses and I uh, would really enjoy watching him maintain those roses. Um, although I didn't do any of the work, well, now that I have my own roses, I kind of spend most of my time in this section of the garden um, caring for these roses so they need to be deadheaded often so I do lots of deadheading and that kind of generates more growth and they you end up with more roses and I spray them with rose care all for about like every eight weeks or so and they're really doing well and if you look closely you'd find there are new buds so a real a real treat in the garden these roses and just to add more interest I stuck in a water fountain in the middle of the garden or the rose bed and it just adds such great interest and creates a good focal point also I like the sound or the therapeutic sound of the, the water um, I always find the sound of water to be incredibly therapeutic Those are my roses. 
So as I walk down now along the gravel bed in the section of my garden, I I love the sound of gravel. Uh, I have to say, Linda Vata obviously didn't discover gravel, but she's introduced me to the benefits of gravel to the extent that I find gravel now to be so therapeutic. I've never used gravel before and I never thought I'd use it in my gardening but I don't think I'll change it for anything else. It's incredible what uh, you can learn from others. That's another view of my sunshine lagustrum. Uh, let's just take a closer look at it because uh, I think this specimen is just gorgeous in the garden and doing so well in this concrete planter. I love sticking in my topiaries in the garden. That's a sapphire. Cyprus, I think, yeah. That's another lemon cypress topiary. She's also doing well in the garden. I just want to show you something real quick. So I dug up this moss which was growing in a damp section of our yard and I placed it in this container and stuck it on a plant stand here in the garden and I feel like it goes so well among these ornamental grasses adding another conversation point and an interesting feature in the garden there's another sapphire cypress topiary At the back, I have an oak leaf, I beg your pardon, oak leaf holly, which is also planted to serve as a screen. And over time, that would obviously fill up and get pretty good as a screen. Look at the bright color of that coleus. I I didn't know what this plant was called, so I asked folks on the Linda Vata Facebook group and uh, many of them came back telling me exactly what it was. So it's a coleus, coleus, I think, and uh, really adding such bright color in the garden. As I mentioned, I like sticking in little items of interest within the beds because I think they add such interest and again, make great conversation points. That's a wax myrtle, which is native to this, this part of the country. And I, I'm very fascinated by this wax myrtle simply because I got it when it was a one gallon container. I got this wax myrtle online in March this year, planted it up and now look at it. I mean, from March to October, it's, it's really grown and is now providing this incredible screening. I talked about that juniper in a container, also adding such a great focal point in the garden. It's 
so good to walk around the garden, especially in the mornings before the sun is out, bright and hot, and to look at all the plants. I also love and enjoy watching uh, the butterflies in the garden. I think it's incredibly therapeutic. Over the past couple of months, especially during lockdown and stay at home and so on, I learned a lot about gardening from watching YouTube and more specifically LVTV and Linda Varta. And the thing that Linda Varta teaches us, uh, and I was just talking to my wife about it earlier today, is that anybody, just about anybody, can do gardening. You know, you don't need a degree in horticulture or botany. Um, you can be a lay person who has no knowledge of gardening and plants and then slowly develop the skill as you learn the fascinating life of plants. And in the end, the lesson always is if it makes you happy, just do it. Now, Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, do it. I kind of say, if you can dream it, grow it. So for most of my life, I struggled with epilepsy. Uh, I, you know, it's somewhat under control now, but um, it was a real challenge and uh, quite a bit of a hurdle. But I still managed to get to law school and qualify as a lawyer and grow my career. I also have Asperger's syndrome, which is a higher functioning form of autism. And when you have those challenges in life, you tend to look for things to provide therapy. Now, today, this garden has really provided me with incredible therapy where I'm so absorbed into the beauty of nature as I work in the garden and enjoy planting, designing this young garden and watching the plants, shrubs and trees grow. The challenges that I have from a health standpoint have largely disappeared. And I have to say, my passion for gardening only really emerged after watching Linda Varta. Okay, thanks everybody for spending time with me in my garden. This is Leo, by the way. Say hi, Leo. Say bye, Leo. Okay, stay safe, everybody, and take care. Bye.